I liked the Radisson because it had a large, spacious lobby. It was like staying in hotels you see in old movies. I stood off to the side with my sons, Bradley and Terry. We were waiting for my wife, Lauren, to show up for a date on Wednesday afternoon. My sons and I had been planning this day for weeks, and we were all anxious to see how it would go. Lauren and I were going to celebrate our silver wedding anniversary next week. We got married early and had our boys early. They both attended Temple University on scholarships. Although we lived in Reading, we didn't usually make it to downtown Philadelphia. I had never been to or stayed at a Radisson before. I work in the legal department of an accounting firm in Reading. For the past 10 years, I had a regular weekly meeting with a large retirement care contractor in Harrisburg. It was one of those meetings that was never canceled or rescheduled. That's probably why Lauren chose Wednesday for her weekly trip to the Radisson. It was a two-hour drive from Reading to downtown Philadelphia in horrible traffic, so it must have been important to her. I started to suspect something was going on about two months ago. It was just little things that caught my attention. The company had an investigator on retainer, and he was more than willing to take on a little surveillance work between his regular jobs. It was expensive, but I didn't care. It didn't take him long to find out that Lauren was traveling to Philadelphia on Wednesday morning and meeting a family friend, Kyle Standish, here at the Radisson Hotel. Lauren would always stop by the gift shop and wait for Kyle. When he arrived, he would get a room and walk through the lobby to the payphone. He would place a small envelope under the payphone and enter the elevator, always on the eighth floor. Lauren would come out of the gift shop, take the envelope containing the room key, and follow him to his floor. They'd be there for about three hours, and then they'd split up. Kyle used to work for our company. We socialized with Kyle and his wife, Beth, at several company events, and even got together before his transfer to the Montgomery County office. I hadn't seen him in several years. A few months ago, Bradley and Terry were at a job fair at the Radisson Hotel and spotted Kyle getting out of a new red Corvette. They were about to catch up with him and say hello when Terry spotted Lauren in the gift store. The boys stopped and just stared. They both wondered what their mother would be doing in a hotel gift store 50 miles from home in the middle of the week. I guess it didn't take them long to figure it out. About two weeks ago, they both reluctantly approached me one evening when Lauren was visiting her sister. That's when I found out about their trip to the Radisson. Dad, if you knew what was going on, why didn't you do anything? Terry, I just found out recently. I don't know what I want. I love your mother, and it's hard for me to think about life without her. I wish it had never happened, or at least I would never have known. Now that I know, I can't ignore it. Any suggestions? I know a guy who'd kill Kyle for 500 bucks. That's a little radical, Bradley. Let's see if we can come up with something less radical. I plan on calling Beth to see if she knows what's going on. I'm hoping she has an idea or two. We have a small workload on Wednesday, so we can help if you decide on something. It's been nice to see my sons being supportive. I know they love their mother, and the situation must be as difficult for them as it is for me. Two days later, I saw Beth Standish. She suspected something wrong, but she wasn't sure. Beth had caught Kyle doing the same thing to other wives before, and he promised he'd be a good boy. Since she already had enough information about his cheating, she was ready to file for divorce. She asked if I could refrain from doing anything while she prepared the papers. It wasn't difficult to set a date, which brings us back to today. Lauren entered the hotel lobby right on schedule and walked into the gift store. She was beautiful, but a little nervous. It looked like she was making a special effort for her weekly date, and it hurt a little. Hi, guys, are you waiting for me? Beth Standish quietly came up behind me. Lauren just showed up and is waiting in the gift store. If all goes according to plan, Kyle should be here soon. Lauren was browsing through magazines in the gift store, keeping her eyes on the lobby looking for her lover. Soon, Kyle walked past the gift store and approached the counter. I saw Lauren smile at his appearance. A few minutes later, Kyle walked out from behind the counter, stopped at the payphone, and entered the elevator. As soon as the elevator door closed, Terry walked into the gift store. He smiled and greeted his mother with open arms. Lauren looked worried. With his arm around her waist, he was able to avert her gaze from the lobby. Beth quickly retrieved the key card Kyle had hidden and stepped into the elevator. Kyle was a man of habit. He always showered before having sex. Beth planned to wait in the hallway until she was sure he'd gotten down to it. 
Bradley and I slowly approached Terry and Lauren. Well, what a wonderful surprise. It's a pleasure to meet you here, Lauren. You can join me and the boys for lunch. John, what are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be in Harrisburg. The meeting was canceled today, so I thought I'd join the boys for lunch. I called home to invite you, but you weren't there. I can see why. What are you doing here? It was obvious Lauren was agitated. I'm meeting Marsha Phillips here for lunch. You remember her, don't you, John? We went to elementary school together. She didn't notice the boys smiling at each other as she came up with this lame excuse. It's not a problem, Lauren. We'll make a reservation for five and she can join us. Lauren reluctantly walked with us to the restaurant. From the way things were going, she had no choice. Before she sat down, she pulled out her cell phone. I have to call Marcia and let her know things have changed. Put the phone away, honey. The hall isn't that big. I don't think she'll have any trouble finding us. I didn't want my wife calling Kyle while Beth was doing her thing. Lauren seemed a little nervous as we sat there. The boys were acting a little subservient, but she didn't notice it. Lauren placed her phone on the table next to the silverware. She usually kept it in her purse, which was on the floor near her chair. After the waiter took our drink orders, we all sat in silence looking at the menu. I frowned slightly when I saw them smirking at each other. Are we going to wait for Marsha, Lauren, or are we going to let her order after she arrives? Go ahead and order right now. Marsha was a little dubious about making it in time for lunch. She might not show up at all. I figured if she didn't show up, I could still do a little shopping. Poor Lauren was piling one lie on top of another, trying to save face. I felt sorry for her, but I knew she deserved it. The waiter brought our drinks and took our order. Lauren only ordered a fruit salad. Not 15 minutes later, Beth came to the table. She was carrying all of Kyle's clothes and his shoes. Hey, Beth, how'd it go? It was really good. Thank you, John. My loving husband was in the shower as we expected and didn't even notice I was there. I left the divorce papers on the dresser for him and decided at the last minute to pick up his clothes. Lauren looked scared to death. The blush was gone from her face and her eyes started to cloud over. She looked at me, then at Beth, not knowing what to do. Here's the key, Lauren. Thanks for lending it to me. I won't be needing it anymore. Beth carefully placed the key card next to Lauren's phone. Lauren stared at it with her mouth open. Her cell phone rang. She picked it up and looked at the number. Without answering the call, she turned the phone off and put it back. Here you go, boys. The Corvette is yours for the rest of the week. It's in my name, so don't worry about a thing. When you get tired of playing, leave it at home. She handed Bradley the keys to the Corvette. Thanks for your help, guys, but I gotta run. Have a nice meal. Lauren looked at me like she was begging for help. I didn't offer anything. She didn't even look at the boys. When the waiter brought the food, she apologized and went to the ladies' room. The boys and I had already eaten, and Lauren never returned to the table. I had Terry check the restrooms and sent Bradley to the room Kyle had taken. When Lauren left, she left her key card, cell phone, and purse on the table. Ten minutes later, they both returned to no avail. Bradley said that the hotel had provided Kyle with a tracksuit while they were trying to get him home. Terry checked the ladies' rooms in the hotel restaurant and lobby and found nothing. I asked the restaurant manager to arrange for us to get help from hotel security. There was no indication that anything illegal or criminal had occurred. The security people tried to be as helpful as possible, but the only thing they could find was a security camera that showed Lauren going into the kitchen, not the ladies' room. The other cameras showed nothing. As a precaution, they called the Philadelphia police. Lauren could not be reported missing, but we could file an incident report for future reference if necessary. We waited a few more hours and then decided to go home in case she was there. She left her purse on the table with her credit cards, driver's license, and money. Lauren wasn't home. Epilogue It's been two years since our lunch at Radis. Terry is now a lieutenant in the Air Force. Bradley is in graduate school in California. Beth and Kyle got divorced. We never saw Lauren again or heard from her. I filed a missing persons report with the Philadelphia police after the required waiting period, but they found nothing. Legally, I'm still married. At some point, I will have to apply to change that status. In the meantime, I live in a big house alone. All of Lauren's clothes and other things are still here, just like she left them. I'm trying to figure out if lunch at Radis was a good idea or a bad idea. I can't decide.